Hey guys, I want to go over some of the differences when doing TypeScript in React. So to start off, I like to use this boilerplate called Create React App TypeScript. It's very similar to Create React App, but it is using TypeScript. So I'll link this in the description below. So I'm going to be using this as the starter for today. And here is what the code looks like. I haven't touched anything, but by default, they give you a nice TS config. Um, with some good defaults and then we can go in here and change any of these if we want to and then also they have a TS lint um, which is nice as well which just lints your uh, TypeScript code so you have both of those by default you don't even have to worry about them so let's just dig into some of the things that are different so first off how you actually import react so look at the top up here I have import star as react from react uh, and the reason you have to do that is because React does not export anything by default. So now you'll import all um, React like that. And also when you're installing other third-party libraries, um, you might have to do the same thing uh, as well. Uh, it really, it'll tell you when you're doing it what you need to do. It'll have like little red uh, lines like, if I get rid of that, it's gonna be like, hey, this has no default export. Um, this is what the error looks like and that's how you know you need to switch it over to this. Alright, the next thing is how do you add basically types to your React components. So to demo this, I'm going to create a new thing. I'm going to call it form.txtsx and you'll notice uh, your file names are different. That's another thing. So instead of JSX, it's TSX. Um, and I'm just going to copy these to make this faster and don't need those so this is going to be a form component and we'll empty this out all right so first off this guy might have props so what I like to do is create an interface called props and then here specify all the things that you can pass to this um, component so maybe this component has some text which is a string and then maybe it also has a uh, age I don't know this is just a random value which is a number and maybe that is uh, optional so the way you tell your component is you do angle brackets at the end here and then you pass in props like that um, and now and uh, I'm not sure what it's mad at oh this is uh, it likes to start with uh, I at the beginning of the interface. This is a TSLint thing. So we can do it like that if we wanted to. I usually turn that rule off though. Okay, so we have the props here. So right off the bat, we'll get some nice auto completion if we try like destructuring our props. So if I want to get like text, I can now render a div with text. So now we know we're going to get this prop. The other thing is state. So I might have, for example, a name, which um, we'll set as a default value, just an empty string. And we'll also have an email, which is a string as well. So you'll, you'll notice it's already not liking stuff. Oh, it's sorting. It doesn't like this because it looks like we haven't labeled it public, private, or protected. I don't really usually. Um, mess with this stuff we can label it private I guess because we don't want anyone else to use our state usually that rule I'll turn off in TSLint um, as well and then let me show you guys what I'm talking about so what I'll usually do is when I don't like some of these rules they're just kind of annoying and they don't really help me um, I'll copy them so member access this thing in parentheses come over here to TSLint and rules you paste it and then you put a zero for you don't want to follow it and then it'll no longer bug you over here about it anymore and I think I just need to do false there you go so now we no longer are uh, bugged about that and that's you can just turn them off like that okay so the state we also need to have a type for so again I like to create an interface called I state um, so here we have an email which is a string and a name which is a string and then that is the second thing you add to the angle brackets so comma I state and if you don't have props um, what you can do is you can just put an empty object and then the state 
And then if you do not have a state, you can just leave it like this and not worry about it. And we can also set our state here like that. So there we got I state and we specifically saying what it is. And then we can, again, we have now some nice auto completion for our state um, and it'll tell me the two properties, so name and maybe I'm showing the name. And the nice thing about uh, specifying the props on your component is now if I'm over here, I try importing that. So get rid of this junk. If I were to do um, our form, and doesn't look like it, it I wanted to just auto import this guy for me. Maybe it's because I didn't call it form. No, I did, that's sad. We'll just import it ourselves. And we don't need those two. Okay, so immediately we get red lines because we have specified that we need to have at least the prop text. So that's how we know and we can say hello and then the red lines go away. And if we try added, adding any other type of property, like maybe A is gonna be five, uh, it's not gonna like it. But I can add, for example, age, which is optional. So that's the nice thing about specifying the props on your uh, component. Um, the other thing, here's just a common scenario, is you'll have like an input element, and let's say that's my name, and the value is going to be name and on change is equal to this dot handle change. So this is if you want to do a form in React. So here we're getting the uh, this guy right here. So this is an event. So we have to specify what the heck is the type for this event, right? Well, it's going to be react.form event. And then you have to specify uh, the element. So this is going to be an HTML input. So this is a little bit weird, but this kind of stuff you can just Google whenever it comes up. I'd use this one a lot, so I uh, have it memorized. But uh, you expect this function here um, to give you, and I guess it just pops up now because we added it here. But uh, it's gonna give us a uh, form event, and this is coming from an input element. And the reason why I put input element here because this is called an input. If this was like, for example, a text area, I would put HTML text area element. Um, and then from that, I can say const e.target, and then what I usually like to do, which is get the name and the value, and then update the state with those. Um, and uh, with this one, it doesn't pick up on the types for whatever reason, and that's what it's complaining about here. So what I usually do is I just say uh, any, um, so I don't have to worry about typing those. If I wanted to, I could say name is a string and value is a string. Uh, either way works. Well, I guess uh, name, so okay, here's a little, little uh, cute thing. So now that we have set the interface of uh, the state here, it knows that we can only have the keys email and name. So we can't just have a generic name value here. Um, and what I mean by that is it protects us. So for example, right? And what is it not like here? Oh, it, it's just not assignable. Uh, we, won't worry about, we won't worry about that part for now. So let's see how it's say of set state here. We have name as one of the keys and that's good. But if I were to say name two, it knows that name two is not in my interface or my state so I cannot actually um, add it. So it protects you there and t checks the type for that. But uh, anyway, yeah, that's why I just like to use any because um, that uh, really easily just like fixes all the types because I know I know what I'm using is correct. The other way you can get around that is like, um, you can get like the key of this um, interface. So this is a trick I use sometimes. So let's name, and we're gonna say it's a key of I state. So, and value is a string. Um, okay, it didn't like it, but th this is a little trick where key of is now a uh, one of these things. It's either uh, email or name. 
but uh, doesn't like it. I'm just gonna keep it back to uh, any. But that's a little trick you can use in other cases where you're working with objects. Anyway, so that's how you do handle change if you're doing forms in TypeScript. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was uh, importing uh, libraries. So a lot of times you'll be importing libraries uh, that are not TypeScript libraries. For example, I might wanna add Lodash. So let's say I just do yarn add Lodash here. Oh, and I messed up my uh, node installation, so I need to just add this real quick. Um, and we'll run this again. So when that is done, we can now import something from Lodash, right? Um, Lodash. And maybe I want to use the emit uh, guy, the emit function. Um, you'll, and first off, it doesn't like that I have it ordered in the wrong way. Again, this is another rule I like to just turn off. Let's come over here and say false. All right, so I'm just going to say omit from the props the name, not name, age. So this is just me using omit just to be silly. But the point I want to show you is look at this little error. We get. could not find declaration file. So we don't have any types for this load ash right now and because it's written in JavaScript. So we don't know what the types of any of that is. So one way you can do is just say all of them are uh, anything. And the way you do that is by declaring the module. So here is images.d.ts. So this is in uh, this folder. Uh, you can see they're already declaring a module for some of these things. We could declare module lodash. And now it doesn't have any problems. So now this is going to be TypeScript thinks lodash can be the type of anything. You can also specify specifically what the types of all the lodash um, things are. And by the way, you can create other, like I could create my types. All that matters is you have the .d.ts at the end of it. Um, and so I could move that over here as well. And you can declare your type in there. Um, the other thing is, uh, what's nice is, this, it's not very nice to have um, no types for your libraries. And other people need the types as well. So there's something called definitely typed that adds types for all these things. So you don't have to go and do this. So we can just delete that. So the way you do it is you say yarn add, and it's actually another package. So at types slash lodash. So this is a, uh, uh, at the beginning, at types slash, and then the name of the library. Now they don't always have all the libraries, um, but they have a lot of them. In this case, they have lodash. So now we have the types for lodash, um, and it'll actually, and we can hover over and we can see actually what the type of this emit function is. Uh, so that's super nice. Um, and I think that's about it when working with React and uh, TypeScript. Now you'll probably run into some things where you're using like higher order components and it can be really hard to type them. Uh, with that stuff, I recommend just Googling, go to Stack Overflow for that stuff. Um, it can get really complicated or just using the any type with that sort of thing. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it with libraries. You might have to be importing like this, like with React, and then also remember to in install your types. So here's my package.json. Uh, here are the types. And you can see they already install some types for you, like React. And uh, what these are is just type declarations for TypeScript that someone already just went through and added all the types for like Lodash. But yep, yeah, uh, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.